John. Good morning. Nice to see you. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you. This do for you down here? That'll be great. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. So, uh, Sir John, thank you very much uh, uh, for agreeing to this in the first place. This is great that you're uh, uh, going to answer a few questions for us. It's very nice to come along. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, with with uh, the role that we have with X-Forces Enterprise, we're obviously helping people set up in self-employment, search, uh, search their own career path, if you will. Um, and one of the questions they always have is around work-life balance. Uh, balancing that time with the family uh, and the time with the business. How did you manage that? Probably badly, I think, is the answer to that. I mean, uh, my dear late wife was uh, often complaining. I think one of the things that uh, quite telling, looking back, she said, uh, uh, you probably should have spent more time with the children. And I think actually children are great in cre creating the work-life balance because although she can she complained about that. Uh, I did spend a lot of time with the children, and now it's a question of grandchildren. So I think that's probably one of the best tips: is uh, right. is spend time with the family. Uh, but it's also pretty good to have at least one leisure pursuit, whether it's playing some sort of sport or whatever it is, something. Yeah. But uh, it, I think to. Uh, you, you, you can't you can't do it like it's not a process it, it, right. you, you, you've got to enjoy everything mm. and it might be that you're one of those people who enjoys work uh, <laughs> rather more than others so don't yeah. feel guilty about that yeah. I mean it's uh, if if for work is like for me the work is also my hobby yeah actually that's that's a very good thing yeah no I, I, I like that I, there's a couple of things to pick out from that for me that children give you some sort of routine don't they so, so in, in some aspects, of having that routine that, that you can tap into. Well, you've got to be there for the bedtime stories. Yeah. And, there, yeah. and particularly, you know, there are weekend routines. Yes. For, uh, uh, because, I mean, all right, the children very often are yeah. there at school. And, uh, but, but during the weekend, you yeah. need to spend time with the kids. Yeah. And in the end, you find that actually you don't go off and play football. You go and watch them play football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And that can quite often be more stressful as well. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you've obviously worked for the family business, owned the family business and worked for the family business for a long time and had many challenges, I assume, along those uh, or during those years. What, what, what's the one thing that stuck out for you as sort of the biggest challenge in, in being an entrepreneur? Uh, well, there are also loads of moments. I mean, I, 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 mean, I went through a time when... Uh, it wasn't a family business, and right. uh, quite, quite dramatic, uh, traumatic in fact, in that uh, the, there was a boardroom bust up and the rest of the board voted my father out as chairman, which, so by seven votes to two. Right. So suddenly what I thought was going to be a, a career for life mm. uh, disappeared, or I thought it had. Uh, so that was quite challenging in a way, and I was very lucky that I got the chance of getting back. And, uh, and through the whole process, I not only got the got the job of running the business for the group that took us over, mm. but then I got the chance of buying the business back. And then the, probably the most challenging thing is when I realised actually it wasn't working that well. And that's when I, I I had a period of quite severe stress and right. uh, depression yeah. and another story. But uh, mm. I uh, happens to a lot of people, and that's yeah. some, something you should. You, you should talk about and uh, if it happens to you. Um, but then I had to come to the decision of, of selling the, the shoe shops, which was my great-grandfather's original business that he started. And that was probably the most difficult moment of the lot because it wasn't just a question of selling what the family had created. It was more having to tell the people who were working mm -hmm. for that business yeah. that I'd sold it to someone else, which actually was almost certainly going to say for some of them, they're going to lose their jobs, yeah. and that was horrible. But yeah. uh, you know, that was that was difficult. But there, there have been loads of other moments along the yeah. way. And, uh, I, 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 I take the piece that you mentioned: the, the stressful times, the pressured times. Mm -hmm. It's good to talk. Well, you, you, well, you, you, I, you've got to have those sounding boards. You've got yeah, to have I, those I, releases. I've had quite bad times of that, and yeah. uh, you know, and at the f at the beginning, when it first happened, you didn't talk about it. In that was yeah. in the. the, the the 1980s, uh, but 
I wasn't going to get away with that with my wife. She, she noticed the change. and uh, right. But yeah. now uh, I'm very open about it. In fact, at our leadership right. course, I play a film in which my, my, my late wife reveals during a television program that right. I had this stress. And, uh, so I play that so people know about it. And, yeah. and that works quite well. And it does get people to uh, come and say, do you know that's happened to me? And so we'll go to the doctor. Because eventually, the great thing about it is it does disappear. Yeah. Yeah. Good. No, thank you. And uh, you, you've mentioned in your previous answer about the, uh, the, the journey in terms of uh, selling the business, buying the business back, selling off the shoe part of the business. What, what about the legacy that you now see for uh, Timson and, and the businesses that you have? What's the legacy that you Well, where's it going next? You see, um, if you look long into the future, very difficult to imagine what the business is going to be like because mm. I mean, it's changing all the time. I mean, the world around you is changing. Businesses have to change to adapt. And running a business is, is, is nothing like what most people think. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's all about a lot of luck and light bulb moments. And I mean, have, the skill is to have the ability to, to see how you can take advantage of the luck. And uh, so you don't quite know what's going to happen next. But one thing I do reckon, looking into the future, that won't change, which is the way we run the business. And if we've got a legacy, it's in terms of its culture right. and the fact that we put our people right at the centre of it. And we give our people the freedom to do their job the way they know best, which is what I call upside down management. Yeah. And that our bosses aren't allowed to issue orders. They're there to help the people in their team to become the yeah. very best they can be. Yeah. And that won't change because that's the secret that's really created our success. Correct. And you, you mentioned to me previously that you interview for personality. Yeah. So I suppose it's that personality then that needs to shine through in the culture that you're creating. Yeah, well, you, you, you can't run a business the way we do, giving people the freedom to do their job the way they want if you haven't got the right people in the first place. Mm -hmm. And I don't need... I mean, we, we, when we started to do, run the business the way we do now, we were at that time recruiting shoe repairers and key cutters and people who could repair watches. And it was the wrong thing to do because... I mean, you can teach people with personality how to cut keys, but if you have a very grumpy cobbler, you can't change his personality. And uh, so we've, yeah, we, we just are looking for people who are positive, who are, I, I mean, one of the most important things you've got to do in your running a business is to look after your people and make sure that they, they've got a great workplace. Mm -hmm. And the vital thing about a great workplace is to make sure they're working alongside people who love the business as much as they do. And that's why, actually, it's not just a question of recruiting for personality. The second most important job our, our management team does is to say goodbye to the people who don't fit in. Right. Yeah. If you've got someone who's getting in the way and making life for their mm. colleagues miserable, yeah. then it, no, no number, no, no, no warning letters or performance management programs are going to help. Yeah. The only thing to do is to very nicely yeah. generously but quickly explain that their best is never going to be good enough for the business and they should find their happiness elsewhere. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, if you could do anything differently looking back on your years in business, uh, what would that be? <sighs> I mean, I, I would, very simply, pretty obviously going back, I would have would have sold the shoe shops earlier than I did because it would right. have been a lot easier process. But I don't think I had the courage. Would have had the courage to do that. It was too emotional to do it. Certainly, I think we all make this mistakes. I this mistake many times. We think someone will actually get better when they won't. I should have said. I should have ended the the working relationship with some people earlier than we did. Yeah. I think that's probably the biggest mistake. Um, and. Yeah, I mean, I think there have been times when we try, when we try to do things we weren't good at. I mean, when we stepped out of our comfort zone and we we thought we could, we, we bought a a house nameplate business, which is a manufacturing business, right. uh, and we weren't really equipped to that. We even got involved in a uh, 
an events business that put on exhibit, put on conferences. Right. Nothing to do with us. Right. So I mean, yeah. stick stick to the knitting. Stick to the, what you know best, right. uh, and quite understand how you make money, yeah. why you make money, and make sure you are using your your skills yeah. and and don't think just because you're good at one business you can run another business mm. because you can't right. there's all sorts of little wrinkles you discover about your own business yeah. that others have discovered about theirs that you'll never get to <laughs> without making too many mistakes yeah now social business is very important to you isn't it and 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 timson has now got a lot of public recognition for uh, the recruitment policy and your engagement with uh, ex-offenders, for example. Why is that so important to you? Well, it's just part of what we do. I mean, it, it's not something that we think, uh, we don't, we don't, we're not trying to tick a, a corporate social responsibility box. Uh, that's, we just do things we want to do, what we're in. And I actually, uh, we, we support things we can get involved in and uh, we've developed the scheme for employing ex-offenders and I do a lot of work with, uh, because I've, my late wife and I fostered a lot of children, adopted two children, we started to understand about the difficulties that a lot of children have when they're brought up in the care system and the attachments problems they have and, and the need to explain to other people, particularly adopted parents and foster, foster carers but also people in school, actually extends beyond that, it, it extends to the judges, the magistrates, people working in prison, they should understand why a lot of these people behave the way they do and that what their behaviour is is a form of communication because they because they haven't had the best best start in life they haven't mm. had they haven't had a carer who's given them the love and bonding they need early on yeah. they go through life not trust lacking in self esteem mm. not trusting other people not trusting the world and that mm. comes out and unless you understand that you don't know how to look after them no and I, I suppose some of those traits as well you can relate to the military community in terms of the, uh, the background of some of the recruits that go into uh, some aspects well, of the military and then also when they're coming out. Yeah, you know, well, it, you, I mean, I, I, I was, you might not look it, but I was too young to go to uh, go into national service. I missed by about two years. But as I understand it, I mean, you are part of a, a, a very close family yeah. when you're in, in, in the forces. And, uh, and actually, when you come out, it can, <laughs> Change, it's quite difficult to, to cope with the, the, the sense of loss that mm. you are you haven't got the very yeah. people who are close to you and uh, it's a bit the same it's not the same as what we have we, we have involved with uh, looked after children but uh, but there's a bit of the same which is probably why uh, a lot of people leaving the soft forces find it very challenging to adapt almost at the wrong time of life yeah. to something completely new yeah. I mean it, it used to be when we ran retirement courses and uh, you know, for people approaching 65, that doesn't sort of happen now, yeah. people change it. But uh, yeah, I can totally understand that people leaving the forces sometimes have particular challenges mm. that they need, where they need help. Yeah. Yeah. I, I noticed that you've been listed as one of the top 10 uh, businesses in the Sunday Times 100 business companies to work for. Um, what did that mean? How many times have you won that and, or been there and, and, and what does that well, mean to you? It's, it's amazing how the media uh, repeats things and keeps repeating things until they believe they're true. <laughs> and the truth is that we've never won it. Uh, we actually were in there, and we were third the very first year when there were only 50 companies involved. Um, people were amazed that this shoe repairer could be in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and the next two years we were in the top ten and we did a we came second in some European right. thing that. And then we discovered that the way you get there is that uh, forms are filled in by a number of your colleagues and uh, it's all based on what they say. And we discovered that our colleagues hated filling in these forms. So it seemed to me a bit sort of perverse to uh, expect them to do something they didn't like. Uh, make, you know, so make, giving them a misery to just to be on something that says we're great at looking after our people so we we stopped entering so we've never been in, in it for years and years and years but actually I think I mean the fact that lots of people try to copy some of the things we do uh, suggests that we 
if if it was done properly enough, you would like filling the forms. I think we'd still yeah. be up there. As somebody who has been successful in business, successful business owner, what's the advice that you would give to somebody who is starting out on this journey? I've asked that a few times, and it, it you know it all depends on the individual, of course. I mean, um, I can't imagine what anyone else is quite like. But it seems to me that if you're wanting to start off a business, make sure it's something you really want to do before you. Right. I mean, don't. The the order is have a hobby, have something you're good at, something that seems to work that other people want to pay money for first and yeah. then make it into a business. Don't say, I want to have a business and then look around for what you want to do. Right. Uh, so that seems like, like number one. So, so you're already doing something that you, you're passionate about. And then a couple of things. You will come to the stage where you need to employ someone else because you can't do it all on your own. Mm -hmm. That's very critical that you pick the right person. And you might not get it right. <laughs> if you've got it wrong, change them. Right. Have the courage to recognise you're working, that, that, that you are actually spending your time working for them and making up for their deficiencies. Yeah. Get rid of them and start again. So pick the right person. And the third advice I'd have is keep looking at your bank account. Make sure that you are in control of the cash. Because once you've lost the control of the cash, you've lost control of your business. Sir John, thank you very much indeed for your time. I think on that note, we can end it here. Keep control of that cash. <laughs> thank you very much indeed.